Good afternoon, everyone. The title of today's talk is Gaseous Air Pollutants Monitoring and Modeling. So we know what is air pollution. Species which are harmful for our health, animal health, or plant health are called air pollution. There are two types of air pollutants, primary pollutants and secondary pollutants. Primary pollutants are those pollutants which are directly emitted in our atmosphere from natural as well as anthropogenic activities like volcanic eruption, wildfire, crop residue burning, factory emission, vehicle exhaust, town and home emission, shipping emission or aeroplane emission. Some examples are shown here. Carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, nitric oxide, particulate matter, ammonia and volatile organic compounds are the example of primary pollutants. <clears throat> the second category is secondary are the examples. Secondary pollutants are those pollutants which are not directly emitted in our atmosphere, but they are produced chemically or photochemically from primary pollutants. Some examples are shown here, sulfur trioxide, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, hydrogen peroxide, ammonium, ozone, and particulate matter. Out of these pollutants, few pollutants are more important with respect to other. These pollutants are called criteria air pollutants. And on these pollutants, our government has set up certain criteria according to their health implications. According to that, our government has uh, decided some national ambient air quality standards for these gases or in particulate matter. There are total six criteria air pollutants. These are carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, particulate matter, ozone, and particulate matter in two different categories. The particulate matter 2.5 and particulate matter 10. Particulate matter 2.5 stands for particulate matter having size less than 2.5 micrometer and PM10 stands for particulate matter having size less than 10 micrometer. So the, here you can see six criteria air pollutants and they are averaged for different time period. Like here you can see different time period averaging and according to their average concentration air quality index category is decided. You can see here six different air quality index category. These are good, satisfactory, moderately polluted, poor, very poor, and severe. And in each category, you can see concentration range of different pollutants. All these pollutants are given in microgram per meter cube, except carbon monoxide, which is given in milligram per meter cube. So you can see here that all these pollutants are showing certain range in each category. Right. So if we make measurement of these pollutants over one location, then we will get certain concentration. Suppose we are making measurement of all these pollutants over Delhi and we are making measurement for 24 hours for uh, uh, PM 2.5, PM 10, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide and 8 hour average for ozone and carbon monoxide. Then you will get some one specific average concentration of these pollutants in the ambient air over Delhi. So that concentration will definitely fall in certain range. Like for NO2, you can see here NO2, suppose we have made measurement and it is coming 50 microgram per meter cube. So it will fall in the category of 41 to 80 uh, microgram per meter cube. And accordingly, the air quality index with respect to NO2 will be become satisfactory. Similarly, if you will make measurement for all the pollutants, each pollutant will fall in at least one category. <clears throat> so suppose you are making measurement for all six criteria air pollutants and some are falling in the good category, some in satisfactory category and some in moderately polluted and one is falling in poor category. Suppose PM2.5 is falling in poor category, then final air quality index for that location will be considered as poor. So this is the air quality index category for different pollutants. For India, air pollution is a big problem. Here in this uh, plot, you can see the absolute number of deaths from outdoor air pollution in 2016. And it is given here that over the uh, Indian region and Chinese region, you can see the deaths are more than 1 million. And here, a recent study shows that ambient air pollution contributed to over 1.67 million deaths in India during 2019. So accordingly, we are going to study 
the major criteria air pollutants over the indian region so what is the unit of these trace gases we are going to study focus on gaseous air pollutants in the present lecture so what is the commonly used unit for trace gases except is microgram per meter cube mixing ratio mixing ratio is widely used for the measurement of trace gases it is a ratio of number density of the given gas to the number density of air here you can see this is a ratio of number density of uh, that gas to the number density of air and it is a unitless quantity because both are given in molecule per centimeter cube so this ratio this ratio will be a unitless quantity and this ratio will be a small quantity very small number why because this n air contains nitrogen oxygen and several other gases so this ratio will be a small quantity suppose you calculate for some gas uh, this uh, mixing ratio and it comes 3 into 10 to the power minus 6 then we will call that gas is present in our atmosphere in 3 ppm v uh, value now the another unit is column content of trace gases measurement unit that is dobson unit if we bring all the molecules of a gas present in the atmosphere at surface at a standard temperature and pressure then it will form a layer of pure gas right the thickness of this layer in milli centimeter is the column abundance of that gas in dobson unit suppose a example is given here suppose all the ozone molecule present in the atmosphere forms a layer of pure ozone at surface of 0.3 cm thickness then 0.3 cm will be equal to 300 milli cm so this indicates that ozone is present in 300 dobson unit one dobson unit contains 2.69 into 10 to the power 16 molecules per cm square now we are going to discuss about the major sources of these pollutant gases so first criteria air pollutant is nitrogen dioxide nitrogen dioxide is not investigated alone in the atmosphere why nitrogen dioxide and another pollutant which is not a criteria pollutant nitric oxide are rapidly interconvertible into each other in the atmosphere here you can see the equations nitric oxide reacts with ozone molecule and produces no2 molecule and oxygen molecule this no2 photo dissociates at wavelength less than 420 nanometer and produces nitric oxide and oxygen radical this oxygen radical reacts with oxygen molecule to produce ozone so this is a null cycle means one ozone molecule is consumed and one ozone molecule is produced in this process one nitric oxide molecule is consumed and one nitric oxide molecule is produced in this process similarly one no2 is produced and one no2 is consumed in this process so this is a null cycle means it is neither production nor loss of any of these chemical species but because of this reaction which goes on in our, in our atmosphere we study no and no2 together because they get converted into each other very quickly so we add no and no2 and we call it nox so here we can see the major emission sources of nox in the troposphere some major source is fossil fuel emission fossil fuel emission can uh, gives 23.1 tetragram nitrogen per year then other important sources are lightning soil emission biomass burning and small sources are stratosphere as stratospheric transport to the troposphere biofuel burning and aircraft emission now one can question that how lightning is going to contribute for air pollution problem actually in the lightning channel the temperature of the air becomes very very high it is more than 2000 kelvin and after that the temperature becomes very very high and it thermalizes oxygen and nitrogen present in that channel and they react with each other and produces no and no2 so that is how lightning also contribute for nox emission the second criteria pollutant is carbon monoxide carbon monoxide is mainly emitted from fossil fuel combustion and biomass burning here range of estimates are given in teragram carbon monoxide per year major sources are major sources are fossil fuel combustion and biomass burning very small amount is emitted by vegetation and ocean 
and these oh, carbon monoxide is also produced from oxidation of methane and other hydrocarbons so you can see here the bio uh, the fossil fuel combustion and biomass burning they are also important source of methane and other hydrocarbons so cause uh, these uh, carbon monoxide is directly emitted in the atmosphere and also uh, chemically uh, uh, photochemically produced in the atmosphere because of oxidation of methane and other hydrocarbons and major source uh, sink of carbon monoxide is tropospheric oxidation by hydroxyl radicals and small uh, loss processes of carbon monoxide are its transport in the stratosphere or soil uptake then it is uh, then the third criteria pollutant is ozone ozone is a secondary criteria air pollutant it is not emitted directly in our atmosphere it is produced from other pollutants like carbon monoxide nitric oxide nitrogen dioxide and hydrocarbon so we, these pollutants are emitted in the atmosphere through various activities and in the presence of sunlight and through a very complex ke chemistry chemical mechanism they produce ozone in the atmosphere so uh, in the troposphere ozone is produced because of the uh, dissociation of nitrogen dioxide so in clean environment when there is no there are no pollutants we can see this chain mechanism which was discussed earlier this goes on and no reacts with ozone produces no2 no2 photo dissociate produces no and o and o2 reacts and produce ozone so in the process one ozone molecule is destroyed and one ozone molecule is produced so there is no net production of ozone in the clean atmosphere but in the polluted polluted environment what happens volatile organic compounds carbon monoxide non methane hydrocarbon methane all these compounds produce ho2 radical and ho2 radical react with nitric oxide to produce nitrogen dioxide and oh radical now nitrogen dioxide photo dissociates and produces no and o and o reacts with oxygen molecule to produce ozone so here you can see that now in this process no doesn't react with ozone so there is no loss of ozone only production of ozone so in the polluted environment uh, rapid production of ozone takes place if there are favorable concentration of nitric oxide nitrogen dioxide and other pollutants so this is the production mechanism of ozone from carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons the production mechanism of ozone depends on ozone itself ozone photo dissociates at wavelength less than 310 nanometer and produces oxygen and uh, oxygen uh, uh, molecule and oxygen radical at excited state and this radical reacts with water vapor to produce hydroxyl radical now this hydroxyl radical is called detergent in the atmosphere this reacts with carbon monoxide or hydrocarbons present in the atmosphere and it gives rise ho2 radical or ro2 radical here r stands for ethyl methyl type group it depends uh, it defines every hydrocarbon so here you can see ho2 radical is produced or ro2 radical is produced and these ho2 are ro2 radical react with no and convert it into no2 and no2 photo dissociate at wavelength less than 420 nanometer to produce no and o similarly here we can see that uh, ro2 reacts with no and produces no2 and ro now ro again reacts with water, uh, oxygen molecule and produces r dash cho plus H, ho2 this ho2 radical again reacts with nitric oxide to produce no2 and no2 photo dissociates and produces no and o so here you can see that one um, hydrocarbon can produce more than one ozone molecule and in this whole process hydroxyl radical is not consumed in the process so once one ozone molecule is photo dissociated it produces hydroxyl radical then this hydroxyl radical will keep on producing ozone in cyclic fashion because oh radical will be coming out after this reaction so oh uh, radical or no and no2 are not consumed in the process so no and no2 and oh and ho2 radicals are called few uh, these are called uh, catalytic precursor of ozone and carbon monoxide 
and these uh, hydrocarbons they are called fuel uh, precursors of ozone because these uh, the hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide are finally consumed in the ozone production process but nitric oxide nitrogen dioxide hydroxyl radical and uh, ho2 radical these are not consumed in the ozone production process now sulfur dioxide the major anthropogenic sources of uh, sulfur dioxide are combustion of coal and oil and natural sources of so2 is volcanic eruption and oxidation of reduced sulfur compound like there are dimethyl sulfide hydrogen sulfide carbonyl sulfide and carbon disulfide so now we are going to discuss the monitoring of these gaseous air pollutants from space so first we are going to discuss the basic measurement principle for trace gases this basic measurement principle is beer lambert law and it is based on the absorption property of gases here you can see there is a absorbing gas box the uh, this is there is a, there is a box and it is full of absorbing gas and n is the number density of absorbing gas l is the length of absorb in this absorbing gas box and i0 is the incident intensity and i lambda is the outgoing intensity so the beer lambert law is a relationship between all these parameters i lambda is equal to i0 lambda exponential minus sigma n into l here i lambda is the transmitted intensity i0 lambda is the incident intensity and this n is the number density of absorbing gas and l is the length of the absorbing box sigma is the intrinsic property of absorbing gas every gas absorbs some specific wavelength right so every gas will not absorb all the wavelengths simultaneously some gas like uh, ozone absorbs at 9.6 micrometer co2 absorbs at 15 micrometer so every gas have some specific absorption characteristics and it is dependent on the wavelength lambda and the, that property intrinsic property is called absorption cross section of absorbing gas at wavelength lambda right so this is the this relationship is called the beer lambert law above equation can be written as i lambda is equal to i0 lambda exponential minus delta where delta is the uh, called where delta is called the optical depth and it is equal to sigma n and l now <clears throat> this is a specific case where we have shown the laboratory experiment so in laboratory you can fill a box only with one particular gas and the number density will not change from one end to other but in real time atmosphere number density varies in the atmosphere and it changes throughout the atmosphere right so because of that this is not a simple multiplication but integration from surface to top of the atmosphere and here also there is one sigma means summation and all the absorbing species are considered like sigma i and i sigma absorption into dl so here you we have to take care of all the species which are absorbing that particular wavelength so if it will be in simplified way we can write like it is equal to 0 to integration 0 to l n1 sigma 1 for one gas plus n2 sigma 2 for other gas and so on if that sing, single wavelength is being absorbed by different species present in the atmosphere now in more generalized case the light will not always travel vertically towards the earth right it will come towards the earth in the slanted path also so if we make it generalized then if l is the depth of the atmosphere and chi is the solar zenith angle then this distance which is traveled in the atmosphere before reaching to the surface of the earth will be equal to l by cos of chi so the generalized formula will be a uh, generalized beer lambert formula will be i lambda is equal to i0 lambda exponential minus delta by cos of chi where chi is the zenith angle and transmittance is the ratio of incident uh, outgoing intensity by incident intensity 
Now to understand how this Beer Lambert law works, here I have given an example of in situ observation. So these gases can be measured in the ambient air in the uh, using this box like instrument. So this is a small box like instrument and inside this instrument we are going to measure the ozone and inside this instrument there is a absorption cell a uv detector and a uv lamp and there is a pump and there is a ozone scrubber in the path of sample air and there is a direct path and this is a solenoid valve this solenoid valve gets connected to this path for 5 second and this path for 5 second next 5 second so this means that this uh, solenoid valve allows ambient air coming directly in the absorption cell whereas for next 5 second it will allow the air parcel to travel through the ozone scrubber and then it allow, comes inside the absorption cell and then thrown out by the pump so consider the first 5 second first 5 second this solenoid valve is connected to this path so air ambient air is sucked inside this instrument via direct path means directly ambient air is entering in the absorption cell and uv lamp is emitting uv light and it will pass through the absorption cell and will be received by uv detector and instant and the intensity will be measured by uv detector in this case the beer lambert law will be equal to uh, i lambda which is the transmitted energy will be equal to i0 lambda exponential minus 0 to l sigma ozone multiplied by number density of ozone plus sigma sigma dash lambda and i dash lambda into dl now this term is arising because of absorption of ozone and this term is arising because of other interfering species which might be present in the ambient air and which might be absorbing the same particular wavelength right now this for next 5 second this path will get connected in this path and air will come inside the absorption cell via ozone scrubber ozone scrubber will convert all the ozone molecules present in the ambient air into oxygen so when air will enter in the absorption cell what will happen number density of ozone will become zero and the intensity which will be measured by uv detector will be equal to i0 lambda exponential minus 0 to l sigma sigma dash lambda n dash and i dash into dl means only other species which were present in the air parcel will absorb that wavelength and there will not be any absorption by ozone right now if we take the ratio of these two intensity i by i dash it will be equal to exponential minus 0 to l sigma ozone number density of ozone into dl sigma is a function of wavelength for each particular gas and it is a known parameter i and i dash are measured in two cycles first cycle for 5 second and second cycle for 5 second so in two uh, cycles we have measured i and i dash what is unknown only number density of ozone is unknown in this process so by this by using this beer lambert law we can calculate number density of ozone in the ambient air similar box like instruments are being used for the measurement of carbon monoxide nitric oxide nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide and they are based on beer lambert law chemical luminescence based law and fluorescence based methods but our main purpose is to is to discuss the satellite remote sensing of trace gases and this is explained to understand the satellite remote sensing of trace gases so satellite detects back scattered solar or emitted terrestrial radiation and we know the distinct absorption spectra of each trace gas we can identify a spectral uh, fingerprint for each atmospheric constituent and then retrieval algorithms infer physical quantities such as number density and column amount of different gases present in the atmosphere so what satellite measures either reflected solar radiation 
or emitted terrestrial radiation from surface of the earth and or different layers of the atmosphere right so when solar radiation travels through the atmosphere and then reflected back to the satellite or when uh, terrestrial radiation emitted from the surface uh, and the atmospheric layers they uh, they travel through the atmospheric layer the photons are absorbed by various constituents present in our atmosphere and they modify the radiance received by satellite they modify the uh, uh, the radiance which is received by satellite and they leave their fingerprint on the uh, on the outgoing radiation right or by using that uh, fingerprint we can calculate the concentration of these gases here in this plot you can see terrestrial radiation spectrum measured from a satellite and here y axis shows radiance received by satellite and x axis shows wave number or wavelength right and here you can see the black body curves so these are the black body curves for different different temperature which are mentioned here and this is the continuous black line shows the emission is uh, this the terrestrial radiation spectrum which is received by satellite so you can see from 8 to 12 micrometer range this is maximum and it is coinciding with the temperature 320 kelvin it is directly coming from the surface of the earth except for ozone absorption band which is which is lie which lies at 9.6 micrometer and there ozone is strongly as a strong ozone is a strong absorber and ozone absorbs significant amount of photons similarly you can see a strong dip at 15 micrometer because at this wavelength carbon dioxide is very strong absorber other than that methane air and water vapor also absorb in the ir range so when there is absorption then there will be reduced number of photons re reaching to the top of the atmosphere so if we are interested in any particular gas measurement we have to identify their absorption spectra so here ozone is absorbing here in this 9.6 micrometer band ozone is absorbing so 9.6 micrometer wavelength received by satellite will give me information about the column content of ozone so for this now recall the in situ observation principle so in the atmosphere we cannot kill ozone or we cannot filter out other species which are present in the atmosphere and can use the pierre lambert law so what is the basic measurement principle now use two different wavelengths two wavelengths are typically used in retrieval lambda 1 is not absorbed by gas and lambda 2 is absorbed by gas and they are closely lying wavelengths so we have to choose one wavelength which is very strongly absorbed by gas and other wavelength which is not strongly absorbed by gas and their differential absorption spectra is used for the retrieval of their uh, concentration in the atmosphere so two basically two instruments which uh, sense the reflected solar radiation these are ozone monitoring instrument and tropospheric ozone monitoring instrument these two instrument give the total and tropospheric column content uh, of different uh, pollutants like uh, total and tropospheric column no2 total and tropospheric column ozone and total column so2 uh, by ozone monitoring instrument and Uh, total and tropospheric column no2 total and tropospheric column ozone total column so2 and total column carbon monoxide by tropomi instrument that is tropospheric ozone monitoring instrument and for this measurement they we are not using single wavelength we are using a wavelength range like no2 is measured from 405 to 465 nanometer and ozone absorbs in the range of 325 to 335 nanometer and so2 retrieval we use 312 to 326 nanometer and co we use 2324 to 2338 nanometer so these are the wavelength range which are sensed by satellite and inform they leave information about their uh, atmospheric content in the atmosphere and uh, then these uh, by using the complex retrieval algorithms their total or tropospheric column are calculated by satellite 
so here is a comparison between these two instrument omi is on board aura and tropomi is on board sentinel 5p omi was launched in 2004 july and uh, tropomi is a recent instrument which was launched in october 2017 both are nadir viewing imaging spectrometer and their spectral range and their spectral resolution and spatial resolution are shown here you can see the spatial resolution of omi is relatively poor with respect to uh, spatial resolution which is received by tropomi and here you can see tropospheric no2 vertical column on 17th april 2018 and you can see here that omi is a poor resolution data so you can see here the uh, plume is not very clearly visible but here in tropomi data you can see the plume is very clearly visible so pro tropomi data is a, a better data uh, in terms of spatial resolution it is updated one also and it also makes measurement in uh, sphere band also and it also gives the total column content of carbon monoxide which was absent in ozone monitoring instrument the previous instrument we can also retrieve the vertical profile of pollutant gases if we make measurement in ir and emitted terrestrial radiation so terrestrial radiation is emitted by we all know that every body having temperature greater than 0 kelvin emits radiation according to planck's law which is given here v nu t nu is the frequency and t is the temperature it is equal to 2 h nu by q nu q by c square exponential h nu by k b t minus 1 so this is the planck function according to this uh, this function the every body which is present at any temperature will emit radiation right so our earth surface as well as different layers of atmosphere also emit radiation and that radiation can be sensed by satellite so our earth surface our earth surface will emit radiation it will be absorbed by overlying atmosphere and then it will be received by satellite similarly the uh, the layers present in atmosphere they will emit radiation and that will be absorbed by overlying atmosphere and then it will be received by satellite so what satellite will sense the spectral radiation received by the satellite at frequency nu will be equal to v nu ts which is the planck function at temperature ts which is the surface temperature this is the surface component multiplied by tau nu from 0 to infinity means from surface of the earth to top of the atmosphere so this is the transmittance this we have to multiply because it will be absorbed this uh, photons in this range will be absorbed by the atmosphere plus integration 0 to infinity b nu tz multiplied by d tau by dz into dz this term is integration from 0 to infinity and it is coming because of direct atmospheric emission coming from different different layers of the atmosphere and this d tau by dz is the rate of change of transmittance with altitude and this term is called weighting function and this weighting function is very important for retrieval of vertical profile of vertical profile of different species so first we will learn how we can get vertical profile of different species present in atmosphere so suppose this is a absorption band of one specific gas suppose for 9.6 micrometer for ozone so lambda 3 is the central wavelength which is very strongly absorbed by absorbed by ozone and lambda 1 is a wavelength which is uh, available at the wings means it is also being absorbed but very minor absorption is being made by ozone in this wavelength right so transmittance will be close to 1 for lambda 1 means total incident photons maximum number of photons will be transmitted so it transmittance will be close to 1 whereas for lambda 3 it will be close to 0 means maximum number of photons will be absorbed and very few photons will be able to transmit the atmosphere so here in the second plot you can see the uh, variation of tau at with respect to altitude tau is the transmittance so it is 0 to 1 and here you can see variation of tau for each wavelength lambda 1 lambda 2 and lambda 3 so first we consider lambda 1 lambda 1 is very poorly absorbed by atmosphere right by, uh, by ozone or any uh, target gas so lambda 1 if we if the surface emits 
photons of wavelength lambda 1 what will happen the immediately when we go up higher in the atmosphere it will not be very strongly absorbed so transmittance will rapidly increase and it will the transmittance will rapidly increase and will reach to value one very quickly in the atmosphere because these photons will not be absorbed strongly by the absorbing gas but suppose we consider the case lambda 3 then lambda 3 is very strongly absorbed by the target gas so photons emitted from the surface of the earth will be absorbed by overlying atmosphere suppose this layer first layer then that layer will also emit radiation according to its own temperature and will be absorbed by next layer and so on but it is very strongly absorbed so all the photons emitted from surface layer or other layers which are closely near, which are close to the surface of the earth will be absorbed by the overlying atmosphere after certain altitude when there is atmosphere is continuously thinning, so overhead atmosphere is not significant, then photons emitted from that layer will be able to escape the earth atmosphere system and will reach to the top of the atmosphere and will be sensed by satellite. So transmittance will start increasing from that altitude range and then from there it will increase and it will reach to the value 1. Right. So a lambda one very quickly uh, uh, transmittance will in start increasing in the atmosphere and for lambda three the absorption will be significant up to at up to some altitude and beyond that lambda three will be strongly absorbed now, will not be absorbed and will be allowed to escape the atmosphere and lambda two is an intermediate wavelength means it is intermediate its absorption is intermediate level. So it will lie in between lambda 1 and lambda 3 curves, right? Now, this was the variation of transmittance with respect to altitude. Now we see the rate of change of transmittance with pressure or rate of change of transmittance with respect to altitude. So this was the term which we are going to discuss. So this uh, rate, rate of change of transmittance with respect to pressure, if we see lambda 1, rate of change will be immediately very high near the surface. If we go slightly higher in the atmosphere, rate of change of transmittance will be very high. So rate of change of the, of the transmittance for lambda 1 will be maximum near the surface and it will decrease with increasing altitude and it will, after it becomes 1, then there will not be any change and it will be 0. For lambda 3, from here to here, no change is happening in the uh, transmittance value from surface to this altitude. There is no change in transmittance. So rate of change of transmittance will also be zero. After this altitude, change is starting. And then this lambda 3 rate of change of transmittance with respect to pressure will also increase for lambda 3. Around this re region, it will be maximum. And after that, it will decrease and it will come down to zero. And lambda 2 is intermediate wavelength, so it will speak at around mid-level, right? So from here we can see that lambda 1 will give information of this layer. If satellite is sensing lambda 1, lambda 1 will give you information about the lowest atmosphere, right? Lambda 2 will give you intermediate atmosphere and lambda 3 will give you upper atmospheric information. Lambda 3, if, we, if satellite is sensing lambda 3 wavelength photons only, then it is not looking at the lower atmosphere. The lower atmospheric contribution is zero. Similarly, if satellite is measuring lambda 2, low, lower atmosphere and upper atmosphere contribution is zero. That is why this only this layer information will be reaching to the top of the atmosphere to the satellite. So by measuring uh, photon radiance at different different wavelengths, having different absorption characteristic of the having different absorption cross section for one gas, then we can get vertical profile of that gas in the atmosphere. So. Using this principle, few, there are few instruments are mentioned and uh, these instruments measure either CO or CO plus ozone. These are MOPIT, measurement of pollution in the troposphere. It is on board a rice spacecraft and horizontal coverage is 22 kilometer by 22 kilometer. And global coverage is provides at three days and overpass time is 10.30 and 22.30 equator crossover time.
Similarly, there is another instrument. It is atmospheric infrared sounder, and it is on board air aqua spacecraft. And its horizontal coverage is 14 kilometer by 14 kilometer at another footprint with 1650 kilometer cross track scanning, and it provides daily global coverage. Similarly, IRC is another instrument, infrared atmospheric sounding interferometer. It is on board Metop spacecraft, and horizontal coverage is uh, 12 kilometer by 12 kilometer pixel at another with 22 kilometer cross track scanning, and it also provides daily global coverage because of large path. And all these instrument. Give a vertical profile of carbon monoxide and ozone, uh, and carbon monoxide is sensed at 4.6 micrometer wavelength range, and ozone is measured at 9.6 micrometer. This is only central wavelength is shown here. It, the wavelength range is used very closely lying in this wavelength, at uh, closely lying close to this particular wavelength, and using this principle, we can get vertical profile of ozone and CO in the atmosphere. so we get vertical profile of this target species if we have, if we can measure the infrared radiation coming from different layers of the atmosphere as well as from the surface of the earth now we will see some applications of satellite data this is the global tropospheric column no2 observed by tropomi and we can identify the emission hot spots here it is the global distribution obtained from tropomi and we can see emission hot spots over new delhi very clearly we can see new delhi we can see karachi we can see lahore we can see here european emission we can see us emissions and we can see chinese emission and here in india you can see some locations where uh, some high level of no2 is observed and over these locations basically there are thermal power plants and thermal power plants emit a lot of no2 coal fired thermal power plants limit a lot of no2 so we get we see some specific emission hot spots and these are particularly uh, situated in the eastern indian part that is why we get high level over eastern indian part using satellite data we can also investigate a spatio temporal distribution of different gases one example is shown here uh, this is the level 3 grid data obtained from mopit and here you can see special distribution of mopit co and it is mean column co in molecules per centimeter square and uh, the data is 1 degree by 1 degree and you can see some boxes here so over some boxes uh, the data is averaged and its temporal distribution is investigated in this article it is girach and nayar 2014 and here you some examples are shown it is arid india arid india western india arabian sea northern arabian sea and here you can see the pressure, uh, as uh, i mentioned that co vertical profile is measured by mopit so here you can see c mean co value at 900 hpa mean co variation at 200 hpa and mean column co in the atmosphere so here you can see the black curve shows surface value and this uh, uh, this blue curve shows the uh, upper tropospheric value at 200 hpa right so you can see here in near surface the values are high during winter time and low during summer time it is because of the uh, wind circulation and uh, this this summer time we receive uh, clean marine air and winter time uh, it is a polluted uh, continental air only and during winter time atmospheric boundary layer also remains shallow that is why near surface value rises and in this uh, at 200 hpa what happens a strong convective activity takes place over the indian region and that transports near surface value to the top of the atmosphere that is why value slightly increases due over at that altitude so here another important implication is uh, investigation of high pollution plume from one location to other it is a, a example taken from omi so2 column uh, uh, data and uh, here in ethiopia there is a dalafella volcano it erupted in on 4th november 2008 so you can see a pollution plume and here omi so2 columns are shown in dobson unit so you can see high value very close to dalafella volcano and it is coming in this way on 4th of november it traveled and it reached towards the uh, indogangetic belt 
on 6th of November and then it dissipated. So by using satellite data, we can investigate long range transport of specific pollution plumes. We can also investigate long term trend of different pollutants because satellite once launched, it gives data for several decades. So satellite data here, uh, we can see area average annual distribution of OMI NO2 over the study region during 2005 to 14. And we can see that NO2 value is increasing from, to, from 2005 to 2014. Very clearly we can see. So we can, if we make measurement over, uh, this measurement is available all over the globe. If we analyze the data over some specific region, we can see whether data is, and the emission is increasing or decreasing or it is remaining constant that we can investigate using satellite data. We can also investigate the effect of special events, like there was a very special event in 2020. Effect of COVID-19 lockdown over India is shown here. There was a nationwide lockdown during 25th March onwards uh, in 2020. And uh, it was the first phase, 25th March to 19th April. And for this period, we used satellite data. And uh, this is the OMI NO2 distribution. Here in this plot, yeah, OMI NO2 distribution is shown for 2020. And in this plot, you can see OMI NO2 distribution averaged for the same period, but for taken for other years, which were normal years. This was lockdown year. So you can see the values are very high. We can again see Delhi, we can see Lahore, we can see several emission hotspots in this, uh, in this particular plot, but those emission hotspots are missing because of strong uh, because of this uh, complete absence of anthropogenic activities. However, still you can see some emission hotspots because these are the locations of thermal power plants having capacity more than 2000 megawatts. So the, here is some uh, major uh, power plants are there. That is why here you can see some emission hotspots. Otherwise, throughout the Indian region, you can see very uh, less amount of NO2 pollution. And this is the NO2 change. So we can very clearly see low level of NO2 throughout the Indian region, except, except over the Western Indian region, where it is mainly affected because of the transport from uh, upwind rural region, as well as some crop residue burning activity took place over this region. We can also uh, investigate very high pollution episodes. Here you can see that there was a specific fire hotspots. Uh, this uh, very high pollution episode occurred over Uttarakhand during 16 to 30 April 2022. So here you can see the uh, this fire hotspot during this period. And this here we have shown the fire hotspot uh, during last year for the same period. So we can see the very intense forest. Uh, this forest the fire took place during this uh, 2022 year. So here you can see tropomi NO2 distribution for the same period over the Uttarakhand region. And here you can see tropomi NO2 for 2022, when this specific fire event occurred over the Uttarakhand. And here you can see the difference. So using satellite data and comparing it with the non-pollution episodes, we can identify, we can estimate the amount of pollution added in the atmosphere because of that particular pollution episode. Now we will uh, discuss a little bit about atmospheric modeling. Now we have seen that satellite data can give us a spatial distribution, three-dimensional distribution. We can identify pollution hotspots. We can get information about the pollution episodes and amount of uh, pollution uh, added because of that particular pollution episode. Still, there is something lacking. We cannot understand various atmospheric processes responsible for specific pollution episodes. So for that, we use mathematical models. So observation of chemical species from space reveal the complexity of the problem. The spatial distribution of these species is determined by emission, chemical transformation, changes of phase, multi-scale transport processes, wet scavenging, dry deposition, lot of processes are there. All these processes are happening in the atmosphere, but observation will give you three-dimensional distribution of all the target species 
but it will not give you information about atmospheric processes responsible for that particular episode like satellite will not give you information about the amount of pollution advected from one region to other or amount of pollution ad, uh, convected from one region to other or total production happening over one location so this sort of uh, uh, information we can calculate using mathematical model so what is mathematical model it is basically uh, numerically we simulate the atmospheric three dimensional distribution of pollutants in the atmosphere without any observation by using the by solving the chemical equations the chemistry transport equation that is species continuity equation so what chemistry transport model does chemistry transport model solves species continuity equation which takes care of advection convection as well as chemistry of the target species so a chemistry transport model basically solves species continuity equation for target gaseous species here the model domain is shown so to understand that we can understand that this species continuity equation is law based on the law of mass conservation so no atom is created or destroyed it is just changing its form it is just changing its form either it suppose some uh, molecules are present in this grid then because of attraction it will be transported to the next grid and this uh, this particular uh, Uh, grid contains some molecules it may get transported to another grid and so on because of advection so because of advection the concentration of uh, species will change similarly some molecules will be convected in the process and then the special distribution of chemical species will again change then gas chemistry will take place in each of these grids and that will also change the concentration Uh, of uh, different species so what model does model takes care of all these processes happening in the atmosphere and it simulates the uh, three dimensional distribution of different chemical species with time by numerically solving the effect of advection effect of convection and effect of gas chemistry in this process the uh, output of one grid will be input for other and output of this grid will be input for other and so on so the species continuity equation is solved in chemistry transport modeling so what are the essential parameters which is required to run a chemistry transport model we require initial condition means what is happening at time t is equal to 0 three dimensional distribution of all the chemical species which we are going to simulate in the model at time t is equal to 0 we should know the three dimensional distribution of all the target species then we should require boundary conditions suppose we are interested only over the indian region right we are interested only over the distribution of air pollutants over the indian region so we will make our model domain in such a way that it will surround the indian region and rest of the region we are not interested in so it will form a boundary across the indian region right so grids which are present at the boundary should know what is coming from outside outside of the model domain so we have to provide boundary condition at the boundary of the model then meteorological parameters are required to run the chemistry transport model like i already told that in uh, other models like numerical prediction model different species different equations are solved for calculation of u wind v wind and temperature and other parameters uh, like uh, thermodynamic energy equation momentum equation these are solved but chemistry transport model basically focuses on the species continuity equation is take care of all the processes which may change the concentration of target species right so it the, we give meteorological parameter directly to the chemistry transport model and other than that what else can affect the distribution of chemical species emissions happening near the surface so these are there are anthropogenic emissions like industrial emission vehicular emission domestic emission and, uh, and uh, power plant emission these are called the anthropogenic emission then biomass burning emission which is happening near the surface at specific location sometimes forest fire sometimes crop residue burning all these are biomass burning emission then natural emission which is coming from the vegetation this information also 
given to the chemistry transport model. Then chemistry transport model solves advection, convection, and gas chemistry sequentially. Means for each grid, we see the effect of advection and how it is changing the concentration of different pollutants. Then the advection process will stop and that output will be given as input to the convection process. Then convection process will change the, atmosphere, the atmospheric distribution of chemical species. And then after, time, uh, after this time, specific time interval, the convection process will stop. And inside each grid cell, there will not be any exchange of molecules between different grid cells. And only gas chemistry will change the parameters inside the grid cells. Then output will be saved and that will be a physically meaningful output because this output has gone through all the processes, advection, convection, and chemistry. Then that output is saved and it is given, then that output is given as initial condition for next time interval. Again, advection, convection, and gas chemistry takes place and it gives you output for the next step. So in this fashion, at time t is equal to zero, model knows everything, special distribution of different chemical species. After that, numerically, it solves effect of advection, effect of conviction, and effect of gas chemistry. And then, it's, uh, uh, then it saves the output. And then again, the same process is repeated and so on. Using this process, model, save, model gets the uh, time evolution of chemical species in the atmosphere. So now we are going to see the emission inventories. What are emission inventories? These are the information of emissions. So anthropogenic emissions are based on national activity data. National activity data is like a type of uh, number of uh, scooters, number of uh, bikes, number of uh, cars, number of buses, all these are national activity data. Then emission factors means if a specific type of fuel is burned, then one kg burning of that particular matter will give some amount of target gas. So that is called emission factor. So that emission factor and grid maps means what is the population of uh, different uh, industries or power plants or uh, vehicles or domestic emission sources, they are gridded map. All these are used for development of emission inventory. And emission inventory gives you in amount of emissions happening inside one grid cell. Now, the second one is the biomass burning emission. Biomass burning emissions are derived from area burnt. Suppose they, some, uh, somewhere forest fire is happening, right? So we can, using satellite data, we can identify the burnt area, right? And then uh, using satellite data, biomass loading, total biomass loading over that uh, uh, pixel, then fraction of biomass burnt, that is calculated and then emission factors are used to calculate the emission of different parameters from that biomass burning. So these are also gridded information of emissions. So you, these are the directly fed in the model. Now we will uh, see the effect of modeling. Uh, what are what all additional information we can extract using models. So for the example, here one extreme CO pollution episode over Indonesia happened in the free troposphere in autumn 2006. Here in the background, you can see Mopit CO picture. And here you can see the pollution episode, which is happening. And here the plot shows, x-axis shows here, and y-axis shows CO value at three different pressure levels, 500 hectapascal, 400 hectapascal, and 300 hectapascal. And you can see high values during autumn 2006, very high value. It was highest value in this decade. So what was the reason of this very high level of pollution? It was basically associated with burning happening over the Indonesian region. So here you can see fire hot spots on, the, on the, this axis and the right side shows the total column CO. And you can see that the total column RCO closely follows the variation of fire hot spots over the Indonesian region. So it is, this event basically contributed high level of pollution over Indonesia. This information we got from satellite. What additional information we can get from model? So for that reason, we uh, used a model, model for ozone and related chemical tracers. It is called Mozart. It is a global offline three-dimensional chemistry transport model with horizontal resolution 2.8 degree cross 2.8 degree and vertical coverage from surface to 2.7 hectare pascal. 
at 28 sigma pressure levels. And detail, it contains the detailed tropospheric chemistry, meteorological fields we have taken from ANSEP, and emissions are taken from poet emission inventory for global anthropogenic emission, RIAS emission inventory for anthropogenic emission over Asia, and GFPD emission inventory for monthly fire emissions. A model can be considered reliable if and only if model is able to reproduce the observed features. So here you can see that this is the observed feature by satellite. Moppet measurement at 500 millibar and 300 millibar. This is Moppet satellite measurement. And these are the uh, output of Mozart, which is numerically calculated. So here you can see high level of pollution over Indonesia. So model is able to reproduce the major observed feature. And so we can trust model that model is able to correctly simulate advection, convection and chemistry. So as we have already seen, model solves convection, advection and chemistry sequentially. All these process ha processes happen simultaneously in the atmosphere, but model simulates this sequentially. So we can segregate in the model, we can segregate the contribution coming from these processes. So this is our Indonesia region and this is our downwind of Indonesia region. For this region at 500 HPA, we have segregated the contribution coming from convection, advection and chemistry. So basically over this region at 500 HPA, convection is the process which is adding CO molecules and advection is a process which is removing molecules from this level and chemistry is not playing any role. So by model, we could understand that chemistry is negligible in this particular case. And in over the downwind of Indonesia region, reverse feature is observed. Here, advection is showing positive contribution and convection is showing negative contribution and chemistry is again playing negligible role. This shows that by using model, we can segregate the contribution of different processes over on the distribution of chemical species. Other than that, what is our model? It is numerical calculation only. So in real time atmosphere, in real, uh, real time uh, conditions, if we consider the real, uh, real atmosphere, can we switch off some emission? No, but in model, we can switch off emissions and we, cal we can calculate the distribution of pollutants in the atmosphere. So here, this is the standard simulation with all the emissions present in the model. And this is the simulation which is happening without emission. So you can see, we have switched off the emission over Indonesian region and we ran the model again to identify how much contribution is coming because of that particular pollution episode. And if we switched off the biomass burning emission over Indonesia, we saw that the average CO enhancement is found to be 104 plus minus 56 ppbb from surface to 100 hectopascal range. So here you can see that how much pollution is added at different pressure levels. This information we can extract using model only. This information we cannot get using satellite data. Satellite data will only show enhanced value. It will not give information about the values added in the model because of added in the atmosphere because of particular pollution episode. Other than that, a more reformed value is uh, uh, more uh, better way of uh, doing this is tagged tracer run of chemistry transport model. In tagged tracer model, we do not switch off or do anything like that. We use synthetic tracers in the model. What are these synthetic tracers? Like model will have a gas like CO, carbon monoxide. We can, uh, numerically, we can add some other species in the model like CO underscore one. And CO underscore one is a gas which will participate in all the reactions through which our CO will go through. A standard CO molecule will go through. But CO underscore gas, uh, underscore one gas, will take input from one specific type of emission, say anthropogenic emission or biomass burning emission. So it will go through all the processes like other, uh, like a standard carbon monoxide gas molecule will go through. Similarly, the CO underscore one will be an added gas, which is a synthetic gas in the uh, chemical atmosphere, 
but it will take input from only one particular emission source so we can see that in the simulation how much contribution is coming from different different source region or different different source types so here one example is shown here in this model we did not switch off anything and we added some synthetic tracers to study the effect of parali burning over punjab on the co distribution over new delhi so this is the standard co which is simulated by our standard model co total is the standard co at surface right and here you can see distribution of co and the uh, synthetic tracers which we added in the model are anthropogenic co and biomass burning co and you can see the percentage contribution of co anthropogenic and co biomass burning to the total co here now we have added four more uh, synthetic tracers in the model these are co underscore uh, transport co underscore energy co underscore industry and co underscore domestic and they are taking emissions only from transport energy industry and domestic sectors so they are showing the contribution of co coming from transport activity only energy activity only industry activity only and domestic emissions only so by using this synthetic tracers we can segregate the relative contribution of different co sources right and we can investigate any pollution episode so for any pollution episode we have a capability to segregate the contribution of different source types here like in new delhi case during parali burning period of punjab that is october november 2018 for which we have done this simulation using wrf chem model we can see the percentage contribution for, from different sources like biomass burning contribution transport contribution energy contribution domestic contribution and industrial contribution and other so here you can see the maximum contribution over delhi is coming from transport sector followed by biomass burning emission which is happening over punjab area so we can very accurately calculate that contribution coming from different different source region but this sort of simulations are reliable if and only if model is able to reproduce the observed feature from in situ observation and satellite observations similarly we can see the influence of different emission sources for nitrogen dioxide like here you can see energy sector contribution transport sector contribution and industrial contribution so energy is most important contributor for no2 followed by transport using model we can also see the influence of one region onto other so if we introduce emission only over one region and run the simulation we can calculate the influence of one region on other in real time atmosphere we will see that uh, it will be emission from the here this region also transport coming from this region so we cannot segregate but in modeling we can control the emission sources and we can uh, make changes in the emission sources percentage we can decrease and increase the uh, emissions and then we can see the influence so a lot of uh, information can be deduced from the modeling simulation thank you